VGZ in the place to be. Dude, what dude you're a man that, uh, you know, there's not so much controversy about. And that's the podcast, not about controversy, though. But anyway, there was one controversial issue that happened in your life. I think it's like four or five years ago with the late uh, South African rapper, a.k.a. You, you trended country oh, yeah. over some issue. What, what was that about? That was something I was hoping you wasn't going to ask about. But yeah, man. Um something uh, got blown out of proportion you know it wasn't supposed to be like that and you know it is twitter always blowing things out of line so what was the issue like he he tweeted something i remember he I, he tweeted something about him having the biggest song in the world or something yeah or, yeah, yeah. Like, and i responded to that because everybody knows i'm i'm such a huge casper events one so i mean that was like him taking a shot at casper and casper needed his gang gang to come through <laughs> so he says yeah the biggest song and i'm like just one small small song you're making all this noise. Can you imagine if this guy ever won a Grammy and that guy clapped back in <laughs> the <laughs> biggest way, bro? Was he shot me down. Response? It was nasty. I don't even want to get into it. Seriously. It was nasty. May he so rest in peace. But before he died, we made sure we were cool. So bless up, R.I.P. My full names are Francis Masters Akeo. I'm 23 years old. I'm the founder and the CEO of uh, Right Price Zambia. So basically, I opened it because there's a lot of things that people want, but you know, at an affordable price. And because I was broke, mostly, but you know, <laughs> yeah. So it's an all, it's a one-stop shop, basically, for all your services, your goods, you know, you want to do money transfers, your payments, yeah, and it's a it's a trading shop. We like to buy, sell, and trade electronics and gadgets. Um, so you can trade in your old items like your PS3s, your Xbox 360s, your PlayStation 2s, and you can get new gadgets like your Xbox Series X, your Xbox Series S, your 360s, and stuff like that. So we also buy stuff for cash in case you don't want to trade it in an upgrade. We can also buy your old gadgets, your desktops, your laptops, your phones, you know everything we just we're diverse so we we're not just strictly a shop for accessories or laptops and whatnot you can also sell us as well as buy from us yeah so you can bring us all those samples you've got guys but you know don't go stealing from your parents house now you know we don't want to get caught dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, all right cool all right guys let's do this i can't wait for the intro what, what intro you are the one who does these overhyped intros you're introducing people in a very special way, stylish. <laughs> We're already rolling, bro. No, I'm, not, I'm still wondering why he's waiting for an intro. Oh, oh. oh okay, yeah. let's go. So are you expecting air horns? No, 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 no. Let me give him some. As a DJ, I think he deserves some air horns, bro. Let's no, but go. he's an easy, he's tired of those, though. Kalebuangu. All right, go. You can count the thing when you're. He already <laughs> did, bro. We're already rolling. What the fuck oh, is you? Can, can you mind your language? Don't you have a sponsor on this, uh, this, this episode as well? Who? No. We don't? I agree. I don't know. I didn't type <laughs> I, I, about I, I, him. I, I saw you typing emails there, so I'm sure we have a sponsor on this episode as well. <laughs> See, that, uh, no? Okay, let's just say we don't have one on this episode. <laughs> we'll pretend we don't have a, a, a sponsor on this episode. But anyway, on this episode, ladies and gentlemen, we have... Are you, BJ Piri. Are, are, are you, <laughs> no? <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> You can do better than that. Come on, make it saucy. <laughs> you know, in the episode where we had uh, Henry B.J. Peary, mm. he did say he has people sometimes stopping him thinking he is VGZ. I was, no I was one of those people, I promise you. It, I went up no to way. him, I said, VGZ, why would I lie to you? We're different, bro. Your weight is the same? Uh, no, nah, man, I got a beard, it doesn't. No, but you dye yours. How do you mean I dye mine? This is how it is, bro. This is natural. <laughs> <laughs> oh, BJ, then, BJ says a goatee, huh? Yeah. He doesn't have a beard. But dude, but then you know what's crazy about 
about both their names <laughs> is <laughs> Jay's name. Mine is VJ. His is VJ. Exactly. Which is short for vagina. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my love for the big homie I got lots of love for him mm. I mean I love his work um, He's one of those Really inspirational guys I like what he's done With his with his life You know He's, he's in a very good space Yeah So Shout big out love to for the um, Panji with the fresh haircut And we are at his venue right now This is uh, 17 I think Gob have, have we shown people enough Of this uh, joint already And Panji as well so, so Panji People need to know Who the, the proprietor Of 17 is so we are at his, uh, what, what is this place? Is, is it a restaurant and and pub and bar? So you can come here for chills. It's in Avondale. What's the name of the road again? It's off, Gardenia. It's off Gardenia Road in Avondale. So if you're looking for a fine place to chill from in Avondale, this is the place to be. It's called 17. And uh, is it because people come can only come after 17 or what? Oh, only 17-year-olds are allowed. <laughs> <laughs> and Panji threatens to be uh, a sponsor. Oh yeah, it's gonna happen. We got a call this morning, so uh, we're holding you to it. A lady called me early in the morning. Green light, nice one, man. More about that. But anyway, on this episode, we have he goes by the name Sauce Boss. Sauce Boss, really? Yeah. Why? Why, why is that, bro? Why am I called Sauce Boss? Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, I think my sets, my like club sets, my DJ sets are like. Saucy, so what, what are your sex? You know, at the time, you know, the phrase he got sauce mm. was, was, was trending, so they decided to name me the sauce boss because ah. ain't nobody at the time had more sauce than me during the club set, so they started calling me sauce boss. And oh, I decided to run with it, man. It's like cool. So, yeah, he is the sauce boss. Are you Zami's number one DJ? Am I? Are you? I think he is. I think I am. Everybody opinion. knows. Everybody ask him. He knows. Everybody knows. Is, is he Zambia's number one DJ? He's a dope DJ. But here's the thing. I don't. Yeah. I, I I really don't like to think about those things because, you know, if you look at what Maparisa and them have done, yeah. if you look at what Heavy K and them are doing, and all these big big DJs, you'll be stupid to be in Zambia and be thinking I'm the baddest or I'm the best mm. or whatever, whatever. I hate to think about it like that. I never even think about it like that. Because, you know, we're still working. You know, there's something that I've always wanted to ask <clears throat> a DJ, especially. And it's funny because I am I work with one all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There are two, in my opinion, there are two kinds of DJs. So there's a DJ like uh, like, like Switcher, mm-hmm. like Kalenga, um, and the rest of them. And then there's DJs like you who also produce music. Is it something that has always been in you or have you been like DJing for so long you now have an ear of what you feel pops, what you feel is interesting to a point where you're like, you know what, I can actually do this shit. It's funny you ask me that because just this morning I was thinking about that. Yeah, I believe that every DJ is capable of being a producer because, you know, like DJing, you learn so much about the music and, you know, because you're playing, you're constantly playing these good records. Mm. So you actually have a feel and the, uh, and 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 they know of how a good record must sound. So every DJ who plays good music has a potential of being a, a producer. A producer. Yeah. So I think for me, because I've been playing for a while, and I know how a good record sounds like, so I decided, you know what? Let me also contribute to the. This your debut album. This is my third album. It's your third. Yeah, my and, debut and, album was three years ago. And and more to your point, where a DJ. So you've released an album every year. That's not the plan. Uh, it's just when you start making music mm. and being in that creative process <coughs> is very addictive. So yeah. every time I feel like I need to do some music, I just go in the studio six months, the whole album is done. And, I, and, and, and I know it's addictive because the last time I met you after the second album, you said, I'm never doing this again. I said I was done, yeah. Because there's too much work attached. But how come you're going on to your third album now? This uh, particular album that I released about a month ago, yeah. I was, I, it was not even planned. It just so happened that at the time I was going through so much stuff. Like I I was going through a depression, if I may say. I was heartbroken, you know. Oh, you got dumped? Yeah, something like that. And uh, the only comfort zone I had was a studio. Ooh. So I found my, myself in a studio for like six months mm. and I created Fuego Volume 3. It was not planned. Who dumps VGZ, man? I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm just human as well. 
Were you telling me you only had one girl? Of course. I was about to get married to this girl. Amateur. What? Is she the one I found at your place the last time I was there? Yes. Oh, so she left? She left? Yeah, she left me. Then I'm not sure. What, 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 well, tre- what, what treason did she give, though? Complicated, man. Like, you know, there was like so much stuff being taught to her about oh. me and, you know, my work being out there. <laughs> I guess she couldn't handle that stuff, you know? Oh, so it, so it, she it, found herself crying all the time and I was like, you know what? If I make you cry all the time, I feel so bad. Maybe we need to just call it off. And, I and thought, then she said, okay. You get me. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you get me. <laughs> you, know? you get me. That's the worst. <laughs> you get me. <laughs> left well, without a fight. Fam. <laughs> <laughs> She's you like, know? you know what? I think you're right. <laughs> Let's call it off. You know when you put a threat and she calls your bluff? Bro. <laughs> ah, shit. I wasn't no, ready then... for that. It had been depressed for a couple of months. Mm. Ended up in the studio. And um, Fuego Volume 3 Seas Fire was born. Look at that. In the process, yeah. I mean, look at that's what That's what made um, uh, Adele. I guess, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then I'm actually then again... shocked. But then I'm actually shocked because I thought because you were heartbroken, you are going to lose weight. And that's the thing. You know, when you're in the studio... You are just eating and drinking you because know you're locked up you in so there for yeah. a very long time. And and, and this is so I, with you and I have just interacted like briefly. Yeah. When we met in public, but now me talking to you just kind of like almost immediately when I met our BJ Piri when I spoke to him is, I can already tell that you and I would get along pretty well because I'm one of those people that, just like with Kalenga, I make fun of. It's my brother. I make fun of him for so dropping things, out of college. Dropping out of college. People who, if I make fun of you for whatever reason, if you're going to be sensitive about it, you have no sense of humor. You've got no sense of humor. You know, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So it's 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 one of those things that I've realized that people that I do get along with are people that have don't take skin? themselves. Yeah, they don't take themselves seriously. So basically, what you're saying is that to hang out with you, you need to have a thick skin, or a good sense of humor, or a good sense of humor. One of the two. one of the above. <laughs> okay. That makes sense. But I yeah. will tell you this. The first time I met you was Granddad is a couple of months ago. Obviously, I'd been sh- seeing you on the Z podcast. Right. And my first impression was like, ah, this guy is a bit too much. But when I met you in person, you are like so friendly to me. And I already noticed everyone. Oh, so are, are you saying he puts no. up an act on the podcast or what? I don't know, but it was just nice to me. Bro, do you put up an act on the podcast or what? I don't know. You've known me for a while. Mm. No, you're a dick on and off screen. So, yeah. Yeah, problem. So yeah, I mean, judging from the the podcasts that I'd, I'd seen, the sessions that I'd seen, I was like, I can never get along with this guy, <laughs> you know. But when we met in person, it was grand that is I remember very well, and you're like super nice to me. I was like, okay, he's a real dude. I remember, and I mess with the real. Yeah. Always. Oh, yeah, I remember that you you were playing at uh, one of the food markets at um at RNG. RNG. I think I recorded a video of this. Trust Elson to be at a food market. Damn right. <laughs> why I, will sniff, weight? I will sniff out a food market <laughs> months before. Question, why aren't you gaining weight? I, I, I have no idea, bro. Witchcraft, pure witchcraft. Either that or I have too much sex. There was a white guy right before you came on. Yeah. He was playing a lot of nigger songs. You know who that white guy was? Who, who no, was white no, guy? No, no, no. I don't know who that guy was. I promise you. I met him for the first time that someday. But you know the guy I'm talking about, right? He's not yeah, a local guy. For me. He's a local guy, probably. He lives in the farms. You know this guy. I don't know how to feel about this. <laughs> <laughs> don't know why I'm laughing, man. But <laughs> Yo, like right now, do you know that being black is actually super cool? Oh, yeah, tell me about it. Because yeah. of Amar Piano, Afrobeat. Afro beats, yeah. We've dominated, bro. Like being black is super cool. Rap music. Everybody want to be black now. Simple. I, I, I feel sorry for those who bleach. And then melanin starts trending, you know what I mean? I've never really felt prouder to be black than when I watched this video in the States at this Alabama fight. Did you see that? No, I didn't see that. What happened? That was a video. That was a song. There's a black guy. Being beaten by four white guys. Being beaten by four white guys. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I saw that. For doing his job. You didn't see the video? No, no, I didn't see that. Oh, crap, you should see this, man. Did you you see the video? Gob. This this black guy, uh, he's a security guard. Yeah. So these really entitled white guys had a small speedboat and there was a huge ferry that was supposed to come and dock. So he's telling them to move their shit because a ferry is coming. And they wouldn't move. Mm. And instead what they do is they attack him and they start beating him up. One black guy and about four to five white guys are just like pummeling and just fucking him up. I saw in the news this afternoon that their names have come One up. One yeah. guy. 
who was on the ferry because mm. the ferry is like slowly making its way to the dock but yeah. not fast enough mm-hmm. one guy could not stand watching that shit happen so he jumps off the ferry and swims to the dock oh and the minute that the ferry docks all the black guys from the ferry then jumped off and went to that little boat to where those guys were did they not open a can of whoop ass on those white people Sheesh! I didn't, I didn't didn't see so the end good. of that. The only clip I'm seeing is where the white guys are beating up the black guy. I, I didn't oh, know. It, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know it ends oh, like let that. Let me no. show you. Oh, but the I funny thing is, you know how it is in the states. So the white people, the white guys are gonna press charges, and the black people will be the ones in trouble. That's it, how it works. You know, now that you mention it, I was seeing an article just about an hour ago where they're talking about uh, names, charges are being pressed. It could be that the white guys are pressing charges on the black guys. That's how it is. And next thing you know, you the black guy is like for a long black time. Man in the states, <sighs> the system there is really messed okay, up. Okay, I got the video. Yeah, uh, I'm just gonna show it to Go, you. Go, but you able to put this on the screen? Send it. Okay, cool. So I put it on the screen for those who have no idea what we're talking about here. So look at that. Mm. Oh wow! Damn. Okay. Yeah, that was that. That was crazy. I feel I feel so proud, man. Proud of what the, the ass whooping, <laughs> the ass whooping. <laughs> and there was there was a guy with one <laughs> lawn chair. <laughs> no, this guy was oh, just, no. this guy was just distributing ass whoopings <laughs> to everybody. Like anybody can get it, bro. <laughs> this was crazy. <clears throat> and there was one guy who was just basically just grabbing everybody, just throwing them in the hole. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> oh man. Ah, crap, man. So, v- G- v- VJ. Uh, you you want to say BJ, didn't you? <laughs> Dude, I almost. <laughs> you called me on that one. <laughs> We're talking about your albums before we get into knowing you a little bit more. Yeah. So, you've got uh, Fuego, Volume 3. Fuego is fire, right? The, yeah. yeah, Fuego is fire in Spanish, yeah? Yeah, Spanish. The usual suspects are on this one as well. Chef, I'm sure, is there. Definitely. That's my brother, man. Uh, Chef just has to be there, man. It's like my favorite rap in Zambia. He's on two songs, actually. Damn. Chef yes. is on two songs. What? Do you know what it That's takes to get two verses from Sheffy? Dude, we had uh, Chameleon last week and Chameleon was complaining, you can't get Sheffy on a song. And you got two songs with Sheffy on them. Sheffy was on two songs on my first album. He was on one song on my last album and he's on two songs on my third album. Did you have to drag him from his house? Or nope. What, what do you mean did. from his house? From the barbershop? You know how God much... did. <laughs> you know what it, I can't you know even what it take takes credit to shave that head? God did, man. Because <laughs> you know... <laughs> the thing about making music is when the vibe is nice yeah. and you're an artist, yeah. you just feel like, you know what? I need to be part of this this vibe. <clears throat> I know really big name artists in America don't charge to feature on a song. If they like the beat, they like the flow. They jump, they on, it. They jump on it. Is it the same here as well? I, 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 yeah, I think so. Have yeah. you been charged? A couple of artists have, yeah. I just, uh, did Sheffy charge you though? No, no, no. Sheffy has never charged me. Sheffy was just working. Mm. Sheffy has never charged me. He's... Hey. He just likes the vibe and we have a great connection musically. So who charged you to feature on your album? Nah, I'll take a shot to that, bro. <laughs> Please. I'm not bring out the names. Do I'm we know the person? <laughs> Do we know the person? Of course. Were they, were they worth the money? Definitely. So Definitely. who owns the song? You own the song? I own the song. Okay. So I paid for the song. H- how much money? Should I take another shot? 
<laughs> no, I mean you haven't given us a name, so nobody's gonna call this person out and say, "Look, why are you charging this much for three k, three k for?" That's like three thousand like, kwacha. Yeah, is that like an average price in Zambia to feature on a song? I guess. I guess. <laughs> uh, and let me tell you. The, let me tell you the craziest thing that I've also heard. Speaking about music, because that is gonna hate me because it feels like I speak about Kazadi so much every episode. I heard you turned down. I heard like there was a promoter that wanted to book. Mordecai to perform and wanted to pay him was it four or five thousand kwacha? Yeah. What was it? Four or five thousand. Okay, but that's messed up though. Like that's totally true. What well, why do you say that? Four thousand kwacha, five thousand kwacha, the guy has a bigger song in the country. One of the biggest songs in the country. Mm. That's a bit too well, was the song out then? Yeah, the song was a week old then. I will tell you as a DJ, if yeah. I want the crowd to wake up, mm. I just dropped that song. One of the songs I ran to. And the crowd mm. starts singing. What do you think? What do you think makes a good artist? A good artist. Mm-hmm. I think a good artist needs to understand the type of content he's putting out. You know, because if you make relatable content to the consumers of the music, they'll vibe. So a good artist needs to understand. So it's not about what you believe or what you like. No. It's about what the person you do not make. Like, you do not make that music for yourself. You make that music to be consumed by people. We are asking people to stream this music, so but, it must be interesting. And that's a very, for them to connect with. That's a very interesting um, thing to say because do you not also feel like you are selling out? Why I say that is there was a huge debate. I remember like some time back when people were criticizing Nicki Minaj for flip flopping. You know when she made Starships, mm-hmm. and initially she came out as a hip hop artist, and yeah. then she switched to pop, etc. Yeah. Dance, dance artist today, <laughs> exactly. So yeah. then hip hop artists sort of started attacking her for that. Um, same thing as Drake as well. Because that you raps a melod- um, melodic. Next you have a house album. They call him a culture vulture. Actually, there you go. Yeah. So. Yeah. He's is always it, jumping on some sound and... Right. So don't you feel like you're going to lose your identity if you're going to chase a wave, basically, rather than staying true to who you are? Because if you look at Jay-Z, for example, you mm. know how Jay-Z has got a line where he says, people say they miss the old Jay-Z. Um, what, what, what's the line? Um, Go buy my old shit. Go and buy my old shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he stayed true to who he is because he's got an audience that actually listen to what... He's talking about. Mm. So, but you see, that the Jay-Z of Reasonable Doubt from 1996, I had that tape, by the way. My dad bought me that tape, Reasonable Doubt. I remember very well, 1996. Mm-hmm. Dad, the Jay-Z in Reasonable Doubt and the Jay-Z in the last album, 444, these are two different Jay-Zs. You know why? The Jay-Z from Reasonable Doubt was a hustler. Oh, absolutely. But the Jay-Z in 444, you, you, you can see the growth in his music. So even the music he makes now is not for the brothers on the block. Right, that's, my, that's exactly, what, that's exactly what my point is. Is if he so wanted to, he understands to, his audience. Yeah. that's why he's no, no, a no, great no, no, no. He doesn't understand his audience. He is true to himself. No, that's understanding his audience. He's grown now. No, people that listen we're, to Jay Z have grown with him from 1996. No, mm. we, 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 exactly. So we are saying the same. So thing. that's his audience. He understands. They don't want to hear about Doc, Crack. Hold Joe. on, hold on. They want to be inspired. Businesses. I hear you. you but we are, we, are, we are basically saying the same thing. Right, which is he has not changed who he is. He has remained who he is. Exactly. So even in the content of what he speaks about, when you when you when you listen to story of OJ, for example, he's speaking I about how song. to. Oh, me too. He's speaking about how to make money, how to live, uh, how to create generational wealth, etc. And just like you're saying, from blueprint to reasonable doubt. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite songs is "Can I Live." Well, from, he is talking from... about. From Reasonable Doubt. Yeah. yeah. You listen to Can I Live, right? Of course. It, I had that tape, bro. 1996. Bruh, he is explaining and how... Let me tell you something yeah. embarrassing. When my dad handed me that tape, mm. tape, remember the blue tape? Yeah. Back yeah. In yeah. I think he bought it from the market or something, but like, obviously. <laughs> and I didn't know it was Jay-Z. So I read it as Jay Z, <laughs> and my brother was <laughs> laughing, bro. Like, no, nah, Jay Z. Yeah, so Jay Z is an artist that I feel connected with because I've kind of like grown up with him. Yeah, like, me too. I had every Jay Z tape, CD, everything. Me too. Best rapper alive. What, what, what's your best album by Jay Z? Jay Z, you'll be surprised though. Dynasty. Um, the Dynasty. Yeah, he had the two, Dynasty. Right? No, it was one. The, but, I like the dynasty because... Oh, Blueprint is the one that he had too. Yeah, exactly. The dynasty yeah. was a 2002 album, 2001, right after um, Izo, the album, what is Izo? What was that called? Elson would know. 
Uh, the next um, album after the is, album is that Kingdom Izzo. Come? No, 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 no. So Izzo was Blueprint, the first Blueprint. I'm not a Jay Z fan. Well, K, K Plus left the group. The one that dropped on 9 11. Yeah, I remember. And then the following year, he had a concert you even. Dynasty. Yes. He had a concert. You he remember the 9 11? called Dynasty. Yeah, I remember. Where he showcases uh, the rock, like every. Uh, 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 rock Nation uh, artist mm-hmm. at the time, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Memphis Bleak, Amelia. Uh, Amelia. What happened exactly. to Amelia? I she, know, she, she got quickly. dropped. She got dropped she because she kept quickly. pushing for an album, and uh, oh, the label thought she wasn't ready. Yeah. Let me tell you the biggest, and th- this is what I always, this is what I always sort of ask people to to be careful with. Jay Z sold Memphis Bleak so much, and like he didn't he, blow. And he didn't blow. He kept selling him as the next. Version of Jay Z, exactly. You remember that, right? Exactly. Yeah. Memphis, you one hit away. What song was that again? I forgot. But then he but did the not thing live is, up to Jay Z. That was diamonds with Kanye West. That apparently, uh, Memphis Blake used to live like ten floors down Jay Z's floor. Right. So this is like a kid that he saw grow up and whatever. So mm. he was always looking out for him. He, he was always sticking out for Memphis. Mm. But Memphis, Memphis always just bub- didn't have bubbled it, under. Never he really never made had it. it yeah. I guess. He never, but he was such a great artist. Yeah, he was. Yeah. But as, as Jay Z kept his promise, though, he said, "For as long as I'm alive, he's a millionaire." Yeah, yeah. wouldn't know, eh? Maybe. Nah. I'm pretty Should sure be. he is because Jay Z. I mean, like if he's looking out for other people like Twenty One Savage. Oh I'm yeah, sure yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah Memphis even even this guy that he grew up with, uh, Ty, Ty, Ty. I don't know who that is. He's on every album. That guy and. Who the the same Tai Tai? Yeah, like whatever he hits. He's an artist. No, like one of his close friends. Okay, like, yeah, yeah, one of his. So close he's asked the guy in the background, like running around. Yeah, I mean, that, even even in uh, Empire State of Mind, he mentions he him. mentions Tai Tai. Oh, okay, cool. Chilling with Tai Tai, sipping on my Mai Tais, and yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah whatever. Like that. He's one yeah. of those guys that seem, he gives me that vibe, like he's loyal mm. and money doesn't. Yeah. Really Jay Z really is loyal. You Jay-Z know what I mean? is a loyalist. Money doesn't really change who he. Do is. You know how I know Jay Z is like a really nice guy. Other than him, like bailing out all these black guys when they get in trouble. Yeah. Jay Z jumps on songs for free. Oh, he yeah. has never charged anybody for a feature. Yeah, I heard him say that too. Yeah. So I that's think that, nice I think that's guy. where all these young cats are getting it from because I, I also heard today J. Cole doesn't charge for as long as he likes your beat. Lil Wayne does the same. I think everybody got it from Jay Z, right? Yeah. I'm sure he's on the side. And even the trend. whole thing that he's saying he doesn't write his rhymes. I first heard Jay Z say that. Now everybody's saying they Since don't write. They don't write. Yeah. Remember, so Lil, here's Lil, the thing. Yeah. Here's the thing. I'm, uh, somebody mentioned uh, Lil Wen in this. Yeah. And I was such a huge Lil Wen fan. But um, then I until... didn't know that at some point, they'll start comparing Lil Wen to Jay-Z. No. In your own words, Blasphemy. who do you think is the b- best, best rapper alive? Blasphemy. You cannot. <laughs> you cannot. You cannot. You cannot. Lil Wen is on record at a gig saying, I don't know what you're looking at, but I'm the best rapper alive. Who he said that? He said that. He's there's on also record. another one. Hold on. There's, there's there's one that I'm gonna show you. And he says Where this. he's performing with Jay Z. Then he points to Jay Z and says best rapper alive. Then he points to himself. Then he says next rapper in line. Who's that? Mm. And do you remember? That, that was on, 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 I say that. Oh Wayne. Yeah. Oh okay. Cool. Was it? Oh, I can't remember the podcast exactly, but he actually mentioned saying early 2000s when he was. Uh, Coming up in the game, like coming in heavy. Yeah. And he's told by, I think one of the guys at record label saying, do you know Jay-Z doesn't write his lyrics until one day they understood it together. And he sees Jay-Z just walking, mm-hmm. they drop a beat and he mm-hmm. flows in it. Mm-hmm. Lil Wayne is mind blown and says, damn, <laughs> I never seen this before. I'm never going to write again. If Lil Wayne copies that style from Jay-Z, how can anybody even dare to compare him to Jay-Z? Yo, there's some it doesn't make sense to me. There, you know bro. what I mean? There's some crazy people out there. The only... Some people believe Drake is better than Jay Z. No, I need see... to start slapping some of these people <laughs> <laughs> for real him. and spray sauce on them. Start I need him. to start slapping some of these people, <laughs> Bruh, I the this guy wanted, he wanted to raise my blood pressure. Yo, this I remember one time that he he fixed his mouth to tell me <laughs> that Drake was. I say I was driving and he was in my car. I damn near stopped the car like get out, like, get, get out, up. get out. Um... Now nah, nah, you cannot. Jay is. That's the God MC. Yeah. You know, at some point, the only, the only, anybody else that had more number ones than him were the Beatles. Oh, the Beatles. And they're white. Why? Because they're white? No, no. I, no, I mean, that's what the stats said. What about Michael he Jackson? Where's Michael two. Jackson? He in surpassed all Michael Jackson. Bro. Yeah. Michael Jackson. How many, how many number ones did Michael no, Jackson No, no, but have? remember Michael Jackson, you're talking about an album. Which I think was only beaten recently mm. after 30, close to 40 years. You know what I mean? But when you dissect 
the body of work that an artist has done, Jay Z has the most number, number ones. ones. Okay, cool, yeah. cool, cool. Yeah, you Let know me what I mean. Ask a question. Yeah, since you sound, like, you both sound like a big Jay Z fans. What's the one thing that you like about Jay Z the most? I'll tell you this now. Yeah, a couple of things. Number one, people what who makes don't him stand out from these other rappers is that when Jay Z says something. It is not on the surface. Eesh. When Jay Z gives you a line, entendre. there are layers to what he is saying. So when you listen to a Jay Z, it's almost like um, a Jay Z vibe. It's almost deep. like it's almost like peeling back layers. You don't listen to a Jay Z song once. You listen to it, and the more you listen to it, the more you appreciate it. Because do you know this the, is how I know you and I can actually be friends? Yeah. Because I was telling somebody the same thing. Right. There's some Jay Z bars that I heard 20 years ago. And, and I'm still, and still like making sense. them now. There you go. You get what I mean? The first time that I heard Jay Z, the first time that I heard Jay Z say, um, keep money smelling Morphe, change is cool to cop, but more important is lawyer fees. Like, keep money smelling Morphe. I had to say that like several Dance. times in my head. And I said, for you to make for you to make sense. You, but you, you know, you know what is what he's saying though in there, right? School us. <clears throat> you, you, you know what morph is, right? What, like drugs? No. To morph, to change. To morph, to morph, change. morph, morph. To evolve? Morph, M-O-T-H. Oh, like the butterfly ugly thing. So now, yeah. have, you, have you ever kept something untouched for so long that it begins to like get moldy? Right, ah, right. Okay. So when you keep money smelling morphy is when you've got too much money. What? Where you don't touch some of it. What? Mm. Oh. It's like the other time he says the pressure's on, but guess we ain't gonna crack. Yes. Part of me I had to laugh at that. What? The pressure's on. I'm not gonna crack. And then he used to deal crack as crack, well. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And, and that was a quadruple entendre. I remember one of his guys explained it. It was actually a quadruple. There were four things in that one sentence oh, yeah, that he meant. Yeah. But anyway, and, and how what, many what? bees is gonna come out of Hove's house? Billionaires, bro, bees. and then bees, the Beyonce. And Beyonce. And Beyonce, bro. <laughs> ah, bro. And the last one was um, what was this uh, on Rock Boys, mm -hmm. where he said, uh, I, I think I said this to Kalinga, heroin's got less steps than Britney. Britney. That means it ain't stepped on. Dig me. Have you heard that line? Before? I have, I have, I have. Yeah, I don't remember which song that was. Rock, rock, boys. rock boys, rock boys, yeah, 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 yeah. the rock winner boys. is. Yeah. That, that's yeah. one of my favorites. Yeah, actually. so it says heroin's got less steps than Britney because now, fuck. In, in, I remember having to explain this to a friend of mine that you have to understand a couple of things, which is number one, with the heroin and the steps is I'm sure you understand. Of course, um, in the production, that in the production, mm. the the first person who gets it from the supplier has pure grade. Has yes. got pure grade. The the more it goes down the, the line, the more diluted it gets. The more diluted it gets. What is it? Oh, okay. The more diluted it gets. <clears throat> so those are counted as steps, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. you're stepping on the hero. Mm -hmm. And if you remember when Britney Spears lost a mind and she shaved her head mm -hmm. and she went into rehab, mm -hmm. there are ten steps to sobriety. Mm -hmm. But she dropped out. I think on the third or the fourth step. Mm -hmm. So when he says my heroin has got less steps than Britney, that the, means it ain't stepped on. That, that means, means that it's, it's better. It's got less steps than so what it's Britney. Yeah, there you go. It's, it's, it's on the street. <laughs> yeah, it's for real, gentlemen. That's Jay. You know, man. If we focus on Jay, we're gonna have three hours of an, ep an episode entitled any, "Deciphering Jay Z any, Lyrics." Any, anybody, I yeah. think, in my opinion, who does not like Jay Z, just doesn't get it. Doesn't understand. Their intelligence they, levels are not high enough yeah, to understand what Jay Z. Maybe that. Yeah. They are dumb. Moving yeah. on, guys. Before we I'm have, have a to full. Move my car. All right, coolies. Talk amongst yourselves. Before we have a, a a full Jay Z episode here, dude. Let's. Start, I want to talk more about your. Before we even come to the albums, can we just take it back? Because I, back. I know... Let's take it back to the beginning. Before the world knew who VGZ was, I met you at a club some years back. I think pre-2015, 2014. Mm -hmm. You but were just I, Vernon then. But I met you before that. Where? I came to your house in Kitwi in 2013. We had a gig <laughs> with Mafkizolo. What you the hell used to drive a Corolla. <laughs> yes. As, you know those <laughs> AE100s or something? Yeah. I yeah, came yeah, to your yeah. house. I don't know. We needed something from you. What do you, what do you have my house? With I who? Came, I don't remember who I came with, but I came to your house. My flat in Parkland. Yes. Came to your house. It was a Sunday afternoon. Guys, what's that? Is that, is that a car? Yeah. This is when Mafikizolo had reunited and they had all these songs, Corner, Happiness, and yeah. we had a gig. 
yeah. I mean, Dolo Dam, I was a promoter then and a mm-hmm. host. I wasn't even DJing or anything. But I still had uh, my head in the entertainment business. Only I was doing, I was playing a different role. I want to take it to before you even enter in the entertainment business because I understand you were in accounts. Tell, tell us a bit more about that life before you get into the entertainment industry. <sighs> it's draining. <laughs> it's it's really summarize draining. it, bro. Nah, summarize it's like it. that part of my life. I think I've kept it in the archives, but it was a good experience. This is the perfect platform to bring it out on, bro. It was a good experience. Yeah. I learned so much from it. The only thing that I didn't like was the idea of waking up at five o'clock in the morning, mm. go to work, do the same thing. It's all routine, bro. Yeah. It's all routine. The last days of the month, crazy busy. I would get off even up to like 10 p.m., mm. then do all the reports. The next 10, 15 days, it's chilled. You know what I mean? Mm. I hated that because I like to keep my mind proactive. I like to always be on something. And this is why when I got into this thing that I do, I'm the happiest because my mind is forever proactive. It's either I'm making music or I'm planning my sets. You know how it let's, is. Let's, yeah, take it back, let's take it back even further. What, what did you do your primary school, high school? What did you study? I want st- to understand that more because I'm trying to understand the person, how you've shaped the person you've become today. Oh, so... Let me just start from boarding school, like mm. 1996, right. no, 1997. Just, so just after that, you get your first Jay-Z tape, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in my sixth grade then, and I was super brilliant. So I attempted my grade seven exams, and I passed. Mm. So I went to a school called St. Paul's in Cowboy Boarding School, and I was there for five years from 1997 to 2001. And 2003, I went to Mm. Yeah, I went to Unza. Uh, my dad's an engineer. Right. So he wanted me to be a civil engineer like like, like him. But, you know, things went left at Unza, you know. How so? Like, it just didn't work out for me the way he wanted it to work out. <laughs> but the, the, the points were not enough? No. No, they weren't. Wait, how many, how many points did you get? Grade 12? Uh, I had eight points. And you couldn't get into engineering with eight? No, I couldn't. Unza then was really messed up. You know? Serious? It was really competitive. And I never made the points. Yeah. I flunked one subject, one course that caught it. Which, which one? And that's really funny because yeah. I was super good at math. And you flanked math? Yeah. And math and engineering, you cannot flunk math. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, true. You know what I mean? So yeah. I flanked math. And the whole thing wasn't just working out, man, like. I ended up at Zika's, but Zika's then was also another institution. It was like uh, sex tapes, stuff like that. <laughs> you know, it was just like a, a place where rich kids linked up, right? Just to kick it, go to the club. Were you a rich kid? No, I wasn't. My dad just worked so hard; he could afford these things. That's what every rich kid says. No, I'm yeah. not. I'm not one of those guys. But he could afford to send me to that school mm. and a couple of my and, and my other brothers. So I was there. You know, did my accounting here and there. I didn't finish, by the way. But, you know, I'd reached a certain level where I could get a job and I started working. My first company was Dunavant. I worked for Dunavant. I worked for Nampak and I ended up at Zambif. Zambif? Mm. My last job was actually Zambif. Okay. At the time, you, you, I was you about to, go to Airtel. Yeah. Yeah. There was a job opening at Airtel that I wanted because I'm the the guy who's, like, always on the street, you know. So there was, like, a sales job opening at Airtel. So I was eyeing for that job. And when that job didn't happen, that was cue for me to to seek other avenues in life. And here we are. How did you meet this guy? I went to his house. He said he was at my house in 2013. I, I can't, I can't even remember in... him being at my house. But then again, that ho- that flattered traffic, bro. I went to his house in 2013. We had Mafiki Zolo. Yeah. I think he had a microphone that they needed to use. Yeah. yeah, He had a microphone that needed to go to the dam mm. and we had to pick it up from his house. I didn't even know who this dude was. But Gesh said, go to Kalinga's house and he'll give you a microphone. So we went to his house, picked up the microphone. I don't know if you came to the show or you went at home. I can't remember. I, I was there. And there were a lot of fights. But even when show. we came to your house, we yeah. didn't have the microphone. So we drove behind you to go to some house where we picked it up. <laughs> That's how I know you used Sounds to drive like a him. Corolla. <laughs> because we, drive, we drove behind you. Uh, it was a uh, VVTI Corolla. No. Well, the AU110. Yes. Crap. Do you remember that car? Did yeah. you not yeah. own a car like that? Yeah, Sorry. at some point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, uh, yeah. He, he can't make that up. Yeah, I know he can't make that. 
Oh. What was it? Was it skinny looking? Well, goofy. He was the same. Oh yeah. Yeah, very jovial, you know, welcoming. Yeah, he made us feel at home. And this was like my first time in Kitri. Seriously. And you know, I used to hear all these stories about Kitri, Jerobos, and here is the guy speaking proper English. <laughs> Like, what these people be chatting about? <laughs> you know, it's funny how... Your English is actually pretty polished. Sorry? You, your English is actually pretty oh, For polished. somebody from the Copper Belt? No, no, no. No, 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 no. no, no. Just not, not generally. Not for any standard. Yeah, really. not for any standard. <laughs> so yeah. I come to From somebody's English is very polished, I'm expecting I'm, I'm, I'm all humbled. these messed up guys. Yeah. And yes, Kalenga speaking... The Queen's English. Exactly. Why, why, why do Lusaka people feel there's no English on the Copper Belt? Like everybody's just gangster and speaks Bemba. No, it's because of the stories that are put out there. <laughs> the Jerobo story. Bro, there was but like crazy remember, stories. Even there. at that Mafikizolo gig, there were fights, if you remember that much. Kitwe. Oh, dude. Kitwe was messed up then. Kitwe is Kitwe. now settled, bro. Kitwe is like a normal place to be now. It's like if there's a gig in Kitwe and there's no fight, people Jerobo's feel like that party to wasn't get lit. into the gig without paying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they started a fight. Yeah. Is Jerobo still there? Yeah, I mean, you saw Junior's uh, Chilangabri on Saturday, yeah? Yeah, but Last those, week? those are no Jerobos. Those are businessmen. Mm. Those Who are Polish people. There were a lot of Jerobos there, bro. I'm from Kitu and I can tell you. I can oh, okay. confirm that oh, there were you, a lot of Jerobos. You, you saw, you saw them from in the, the video? Front line, I saw them in the video. From the front line, I saw Polish businessmen. Uh, do you know, but you're not Jerobos, though. I wouldn't know, but that, the guys that point. were tossing so money. So take it from him. Dude. Hear it okay. from somebody who yeah. grew up in Kitu, somebody who had an experience with Jerobos. There were a lot of gerbils at that oh, thing. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. what they look like? How do you know that this? Well, this guy they, uh, is when it comes to dressing, they dress well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can't really, you know, so. pick them out in a crowd and say, "Okay, that's a gerbil," because of it's when they start speaking and the mannerisms, you can tell. Okay, yeah, gerbil. So which is what? They're, they're not polished. What, what are you looking for when they speak? Mm, there's a certain way Jerobos because then again they're they they're, 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 they're Jerobos from Chimwemwe mm -hmm. and Jerobos from Musakire mm. they both speak Bemba but their Bemba is different you know what I mean so mm. you're a Jerobo from which side <laughs> 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 I, I grew up in Inkana East lived in Parklands for quite a considerable amount of time Wait, as well dude, so. so I actually want to know because like, yeah. you're giving us the Jerobo tutorial here mm. so you said when they begin to talk so what are you? What am I looking out for? Uh, there's a certain intonation that they have, especially in the way they slang. Insults. The way they slang their bemba. It can it not even be insults. Mm -hmm. It's just the way they speak their bemba. Like I can tell when I hear one speaking bemba, I can tell exactly which part of Kitwe. Even he's if from. they're wearing a suit. Even if they're wearing a suit. Is there, some, is there someone that we both know who's a durable? Who could give you an example know? Of? Who? Sparks. Is he? <sighs> well. Spox is from Chingola. Yeah, sort of. And you see, this is, this is a phrase that's been coined to, to, to you know, sort of describe pe the copper, copper dealers on the copper belt. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So most of the guys who would, uh, others would steal the copper to sell to Chinese and things like that. So the phrase sort of just coined everyone to say whoever is in this business is a Jerobo. Does mm -hmm. that mean something? You know what I mean? Does the word Jerobo mean something? I'm told it comes from jailbirds. You know, yeah, the, well. people, people who were like in so prison, these but guys then were like in and out of jail, <laughs> sort of. But then the 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 the, the, the copper dealer sort of adopted the word to mean like you know, copper dealers, gangsters, sort of, and they started calling themselves Jerobos. I could be wrong, and I'll need to clarify. But that's that's the story I've heard. But from the Kitwe. one thing I like about Kitwe is how the whole town is systematic. You can't just go there. No. And... There's hierarchy. There's exactly. Levels to these things. It's, 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 it's it, a whole place city. It, it's even a like... bit diluted now because uh, between 2006 and 2012, mm -hmm. no, there they run the city, man. Bro, they ran the city. There was Young Sen, Shimumbi, Chile, Wandelate. Yeah. I went to Kitri 2014 after mm. I met you in 2013. 2014, I went to this party. Then there was like a lot of deals happening. I think the Black Mountain had opened up. Right. So I was my older brother. I went to this party. This guy had parked a nice BMW in the driveway. Lights on, white, leather seats, diesel, everything proper, bro. Like TV standards, like the stuff we used to see on TV. Mm. What, drinking whiskeys, everything lavish. There was so much meat, so much meat, so it ran out. <laughs> the next day, the guy called us, yo, bros, do you want to come by my house again? We do what we did yesterday. Mm. We had to carry salt. Because we didn't want salt running out. <laughs> That's how much money there was in Kitra, bro. Money like beans <laughs> and change like salt. Salt runs out, meat remains. 
Can you imagine? Yeah. That? There's a lot of abundance in the copper on the copper board, man. Like But so then again, a, but then again, do you do you do you think um there is need for financial literacy? Especially when there is that much wealth and that I much money. So. Because you know how they say a rising a rising uh, a rising tide raises all boats is you should be able to see a reflection of that in the community. Mm. But when you see that there's only, de- again, this is only my opinion, the development s- can, might only be, say, in Lusaka or in very small Dude, pockets. Can I have some of this? Yeah. Um, don't you think that there might be need for financial literacy? Um, yeah, but who, who's going to educate them? Do you and when, think, so when, do when, you when, when somebody has money, who are they going to listen to? I don't know. I don't know. Who's going to... They it's... always have somebody they respect, I guess. Yeah, well, but if that's somebody they respect. Because, also made you know, money in the same way. Because how look, is going to teach them anything? No, because look yeah. at it this way. You, you and I have known people with money. Look at Oscar, mm. for example. Yeah, true. Uh, Oscar, to me, my opinion is he's never... He's never come off as someone who is too big to be told anything. Yeah. Whenever I've told Oscar about a potential business deal, he actually sits and listens like, wait, really? Mm. I can do that? Yeah. Or I can do this? And this is somebody with more money than the white family that owns the color blue. <laughs> Oscar Kaluba, to be precise, not Chavula. Kaluba. <clears throat> you, yeah. you know the guy, right? Oskido. Yeah, yeah. Oskido. Great guy. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's, 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 there's so much money flowing. I was talking about the, the, the time frame, 2006, 2012. We had mm-hmm. people with so much money washing cars with alcohol. I remember that. We I, had I heard about a, that. a guy would park a car right in the middle of the busiest road in town center. Across, like, park his huge 4x4 four four across the road. Blocks all traffic in town center and starts handing out 100 kwachas to any and everybody passing by. And this is thousands of people I'm talking about. Mm. People used to misbehave so much, but I'm, I'm happy there's been a sort of uh, mindset shift Jay-Z, in Kitwe. Jay-Z has got a song as well. Yeah. I think on um, Story of OJ, mm. where yeah. he says, you're still holding money to your ear. There's a disconnect. Like, he is making fun of people that still do that, where you, you, you flash money Mm. Like that, and and I've seen people who hold a brick uh, of money to their ear. I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it meant. Oh, like you're on the phone. That's what it meant. Yeah. (laughs) Bro, thank you for that one. (laughs) It took you that long. I was thinking, like, what is he talking about? (laughs) Oh, that's a hard bro. Yeah, so just that, similar yo, to what Kalen was talking about. That's a hard bar. Yeah. Yeah, but no, but, but I, I brought that up because I'm, 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 I was heading somewhere with that. That used to happen then. Mm-hmm. The money could still be there. They could be handling the same amount of money, but there's been a lot of change on the copper belt. Even while those guys, let me call them gerbos for lack of a better term, still have money, they're not flaunting it as much as they used to. You know what I mean? Because from what I'm hearing, they're actually having bigger deals now with the Chinese guys who, who are actually buying the copper for cash mm. in dollars. You know what I mean? But there's less <laughs> flashiness right now. So maybe there's a bit of financial literacy happening and we just don't know about it. You need to send Leap and be with you. Leap. <laughs> Coming here, telling so us English on podcast. On the go, go to Jeroboz there. Kepler's, uh, yeah. I've got a question for you. Uh-huh. Especially that you're from the copper board. If yes. there's that much money on the copper board, mm. why yeah. is it that most people relocate from Kitwe and come to Lusaka? Um, I think the money is with the few. And to find that money, you have to, in most cases, you have to grab it. Explain. Um, <laughs> you have to fight for it. Yeah, <laughs> you need yeah. to have an army. Okay, the money is in the f- in the hands of the few. You know what I mean? It's and how do the few then? How are they privileged? There are a lot of habits? illegal happenings. I think so. You don't have the balls to do illegal shit. No, I don't. Why a lot of people? I think the majority of people moving to Lusaka in the corporate space. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Every head office for any company you're going to think of in Zambia, is majority here. is, is here. in is in Lusaka. Yeah. I could hard, I would have starved if I stayed in the copper bill because for the business I do, I need to be talking to people in head offices all the time. You the know what I mean? The execs are here. The execs are here. So now I know a lot of execs by first name mm. on a first name basis now because I'm in Lusaka. I'm seeing Ooh, them on a regular kudos basis. To you. Kudos to you. I want to be like yours when I grow up. I mean, don't, don't you choose CEOs now? Look at you. 
I'm a CEO. <laughs> My point exactly. Here we are. Shit, that was so techy. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. I'm not editing that shit up. <laughs> that was please take it. Out. No. <laughs> ah, that was so fucking tacky. VJ, so you now oh we were talking about VJ studying accounts and uh, not finishing the course but still managing to get jobs. What then prompts you to jump from the corporate space where you're an accountant to get into music promotion and DJing later on? So, um my dad used to work for a company called Tazara. Mm. And he he got a posting. He was he got a job in uh, in at the head office, which is in Dar es Salaam. So, you know, living in Dar es Salaam, I linked up, I hooked up with a guy called Dagmar. Dagmar was some kid that grew up in Australia, Tanzania, and sport. Mm. Cool guy. Like, hella cool guy, you know what I mean? So this guy, what he did for a living, inspired me a lot. This guy was throwing parties every month. He would throw one gig called Groove Theory with his mates, Mm. And he would make something like a hundred thousand quacha and he would get all these sponsors. If Heto at the time goes to Dagman and say want and says want to sponsor the next group theory, he would tell them, wait ten months, I've got other sponsors. <laughs> Stan Big, wow. Barclays, what this guy was killing it. That guy inspired me. So when when I was done with school and I was working, even when I was working at Zambif, my former boss Damesh would tell you this half the time. I was on the internet trying to promote gigs. Mm. I wanted to do what Dagmar was was doing. My initial plan was to be a promoter. I didn't want, I didn't, not even for, for once in my life did I ever think I'll be DJ. Mm. The plan was for me to be a promoter, throw nice gigs like that guy did. You get what I mean? Mm. So I started throwing these gigs. I hosted a couple of them. Uh, one of them, my favorite, by the way, was Suits and Ties, where I would get everybody dressed up, women, guys, Beautiful event. And then I would hire DJs to play at these gigs. But mm. what used to happen was I would pay all the service providers, make some money from a gig, pay all the service providers, and not have enough money for myself. And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> why am I paying all these service providers this much and remaining with nothing? Mm. So I told myself I'm going to do something here. I was I a was marketing manager at News Cafe then. Right. So one of those nights, Pelvis, you know Pelvis? It was a Wednesday night pelvis. Pelvis is someone's name? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, DJ <laughs> Pelvis. I was only the laughing. <laughs> <laughs> He's one of the legends. So Pelvis used to host I some of the night. You know Pelvis, right? No. Pelvis used to host Wednesday nights. I don't know. Wednesday don't at News that, Cafe man. was yeah. hella slow, bro. Mm. Wednesday at News Cafe was hella slow, so... <laughs> No, Lusaka. News Cafe Lusaka. Have you ever heard someone called Pelvis? <laughs> <laughs> Madam, do, do you know anybody by the name of Pelvis? No, I don't. But have you ever heard the name Pelvis before? No, I've never. Do you know what a Pelvis is? No. Wow. <laughs> On okay. your body. You, you can't point to where your pelvis is? On your body. On my body. Yeah, where's your pelvis? On my body. Yeah, where's your pelvis? Uh, I don't know. You know where your hips are? Your waist? That's where your pelvis bone is. So anyway. Yeah. Pervis used to host uh, uh, Ladies Night on Wednesday, but it was hella slow. People mm. at, in Osaka never just came out on Wednesdays. Then right. I don't know what happened. But before, they used to come out. But during the time of News Cafe, they never came out. Mm. So Pervis started teaching me, and I learned how to DJ. And bro, the next time I jumped on the decks, I was killing it. I was doing it for, the f I was doing it for fun. Mm. And after that, I ran with it. And bro, the rest is history. Dude, no, what, what do you mean Pelvis taught you how to DJ? I heard Hussein taught you how to DJ. No, Pelvis taught yeah. me how to DJ. Pelvis why, taught me how to DJ. Why is word in the street that Hussein is the one who taught you how to DJ? Hussein yeah. turned me into a monster. All Otherwise, right, so Pelvis, Pelvis taught me the basics. built the foundation. Exactly. And Hussein, Hussein is who built the structure. Exactly. Hussein right. turned me into a monster with DJ blocks. Who taught mm. you how to DJ, Kalinga? Yes. No, there's a guy called uh, Ken, the Duke in Kitwe. At Ren you remember Renaissance? Does anybody know Renaissance? Yeah, yeah. 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 So I, I, I never I, went there, but you know, I, 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 I couldn't. I made a lot of noise. That club was only employing professional DJs. So I went there and lied about being a professional DJ from Lusaka. When you were at Zibik? After I just dropped out. Okay. So I went to Renaissance Pub and I lied about being this cool DJ from uh, Lusaka. So they gave you you a know, sword. all I had. 
You remember DJ Weed? He had a, I think a Society Business Park. There mm. was a, a guy called DJ Weed. He used to have the latest music. Every radio DJ used to get the latest music from there. I even club even DJs. Dude, is. dude, I had so much good music when I moved back to Gita 2006. Mm-hmm. I went to this club because I felt, why, why have all this good music and not share it with the world? So I went to the club and lied about being a DJ from Lusaka. Mm-hmm. What do I do? First week, I was just observing Ken the Duke doing his say, okay, he's pressing there, pushing these buttons. Mm-hmm. And I've lied about being a DJ already from Lusaka. Mm-hmm. Dude, I had to learn in a week. And I learned. Following mm-hmm. week, I was DJing. Yeah, a bit sloppy, but you. a month later, I was even competing in a national DJ's contest. Busy Weez is my witness. I was number two. Busy, uh, Busy Weez was number one. Oh, yeah. Nah, Busy Weez had this. No, Busy Within Busy two had months it, of learning, I was number two in the country. Bro. Busy Weez was mad, though. I remember when I was at Zika's, Busy Weez mm-hmm. was our DJ. There was a club right at the corner called the betting club. Yeah. This is where we used to drink from because alcohol was cheap. So we'd kick it off there and then end up in Zenon. And Busy Wizzy was a DJ there. Bro, that guy used to throw down. It's, we it's, have no idea. It's crazy that Hussein actually uh, helped you grow. Hussein and I were actually learning almost in the same period. The section of interaction in Long Acres. Remember that part? The section. Yeah. The Morgans. Hussein would be learning and I'll be copying from him as well. Oh, yeah. But yeah. Hussein was also at Zibik. Yeah, we're together. Is that Zibic. where you guys know each other from? Yeah. Okay, cool. 2005, that, that, that intake had a lot of entertainers. There was me, entertainers come out from that crop. Me, Hussein, Daxon, my Africa was there as well. Uh, who else do I remember? Lona Shawa. So Same. with me, um, obviously, Pelvis laid yeah. the basics. That name. Hus- Hussein. <laughs> Just call him P. Come man. on. Okay. Uncle P. <laughs> ten, taught me the basics. Hussein and Blokes turned me into a monster. They told mm. me all the technical stuff. They told me about timing, how to have a clean mix and all of that stuff. And I was speaking to a lot of guys. I was speaking to Gesh. I was speaking to Tivo, you know, right. just for mentorship. For Duke, yeah. So Tivo and Gesh Groove like mentored me through the whole process, how to be a great DJ, what to do, what not to do, how to just, you know. Mix, balance the BPM. Exactly. Dude. And then there was a guy from Botswana. His name is Mr. O. Owen. Right. Owen came to do some work in Lusaka and he was a DJ in Botswana. So Owen told me when he was DJing, the most he ever got paid was like 15,000 kwacha. And we were getting paid like 500 kwacha for a set. <laughs> that guy changed my life instantly. Yeah. At that point, I started gunning for that 15,000. When I first charged 15,000 for a gig, I swear to God, I'm not lying. I picked up the phone and I called Owen. I was like, yo, I I'm charging it. 15 now. <laughs> I done made it. Yeah. And how much was he charging then? Like I doesn't stuff. DJ anymore. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Dude, uh, let me just remind you something that Hussein used to do. <laughs> and this is how difficult DJing was. And I think it's, it's very easy now because I think for somebody who doesn't DJ, I'm sure you know the basics. You need the songs playing at the same speed for you to mix them, right? Yeah. So you need... It's, it's what we call a BPM. BPM. Most raga reggae songs are like... The beats per minute. Yeah, beats per minute. Yeah. Are like, uh, I'll give an example. 100 BPM. That's the speed at which a song is moving, right? Now, equipment in early 2000s, remember the new marks, the CDN88? They, 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 they will not show you the speed of a song. You have to mix by the ear. Tell me. You have to tell the speed of the, the song by, by the, the ear. ear. That's why DJs were busier back in the like day. They tried that. to balance the speed of the songs. That's why most of them guess, walk like this. Walk like, <laughs> she just went back in the day, bro. Guess they walk like who this. had a whole... Remember the, the Sobi excise books, the black ones? Mm-hmm. Hussein, in the year 2005... You had a whole book? DJ Hussein had a whole book of every song out that year. The and nigga had a BPM for all the songs. Wow. Brick and Lace, 102. Uh, Dude by Beanie Man. One wow. So he had like page one. This is so just how did you find out the BPMs of these? I, I think of you could actually get them on the website. I think you'd actually, you could punch in the title but of the that's song. that's the thing you people don't understand about Hussein. Yeah. Hussein, he's always 10 steps ahead of every ah, other dude, DJ. Hussein, no, Hussein, Hussein respect was for the that first DJ to jump on Serato. Hussein was yeah, the first yeah, yeah. DJ to start using like is controllers and software, all of that. Yeah, yeah. Software controllers. Mm. Is he Muslim? Hussein. I don't know. Sort of. He's got a Muslim name, but let's just say Zambian. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, that, you that, Zambian and Muslim, bro. Yeah. And remember how Hussein would hold down the Sunday nights at Hollywood City, the street parties. The street party, yeah. Oh. Does, Mus- does Hussein have a beard? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> it's only Hussein without, eh? Yeah. Nah, that boy has been through it all, man. Nah, when it comes to DJing. Hussein is always 10 steps ahead. Ah, that boy, man. Hussein was the first Zambian DJ to start scratching. Like yeah. the way he scratches is different. But I think the the one mistake he made in his life was moving to the copper belt. I think so too. I will tell him to his face when I meet him. I think that's the one mistake. 
this when was, he moved, but I guess he was chasing the bug. You know, sometimes the yeah. bug this can was, corrupt this was your not, judgment. Sorry? His first name was not Saddam by any chance. No, 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 no. He's Hussein Hussein Latif. <laughs> Hussein Latif. I think the worst mistake was saying. Hey, ever listen, made. we can't, we can't, with, with these guys here, we can't, we can't assume. <laughs> Sitting here thinking we're talking about Hussein. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Next thing shoot. you know, ICC is calling. <laughs> <laughs> ISIS, we want our men back. <laughs> nah, he's not that dude, though. He's, he's yeah. a good dude. You know, I, I think the other thing that uh, the DJ industry in Zambia needs to move away from is residencies. Exactly. I really feel being a resident DJ kills. Kills the dream. Kills the dream. You make less money. Look at how DJs Killing in South Africa dream. are making money. One DJ can make as much as 100,000 kwacha in one night. In one night. Because he's DJing four, at five spots. Four, five spots, spots in one night. But in Zambia, the club itself will kill you because they want you to be there the whole night. But this is what you need to do. You need to be so good that you the club does not have control over you. Yeah, The club must be honored to have you for two hours. And that's, that's what we did. That's it. Charles, we became bigger than the club. Hour? How do you charge? How do you people charge? Do you not charge uh, by the hour? Something like that, dude. Most DJs in Zambia on a salary. But you DJ salary, the whole month to get a ten, twenty grand. Where you can four make four or five of us are just rotating. Yeah. So you have to become bigger than the club. So the club or the spot feels honored to have you. Not you feeling honored to be at a spot. Do you know what I mean? You wait thirty days to make a fifteen. You're lucky if you get 20,000 kwacha a month as a DJ. Very few in South Africa, a DJ is making that here. in one hour. You DJ at Konka, you'll be at Hush, you'll yeah. be at uh, Royal Park or wherever in one night. But and the good part is we've got... But then the nightlife also... The nightlife also is pretty different because mm-hmm. you've got a lot more people that have got money to spend. You've got a lot more... Um, it's in South Africa, right? Yeah, in yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they can afford all these things. So the demand is high. Yeah. Well... Yeah, but I'm just. But have you to... noticed how there's so many spots in Lusaka that have come up that have opened? Mm-hmm. Woodlands, Salama Park, East Park, all these spots are. are every every full. neighborhood has a big spot. Exactly, yeah. like every one of these spots is full. It's got people that go there. I think Lusaka is slowly catching up to Joburg. I know yeah. we're not popping champagne like they do, but at least every one of our spot is. Is active. Mm. You know I, what I mean? If, if, when, when you but put it, but yeah? the one thing that I know though about DJs is your people smash. <laughs> like, like yours? <laughs> I, well, I don't know. Yeah. When you say smash, what do you mean? Yeah. Do you swing both ways? <laughs> what would you ask? What? Why would you specify? <laughs> I would oh, assume like, girls, yes. Oh, okay. I don't know about that. No, you don't? Nah. You see, it's this thinking that made your mm. woman think you're always smashing because people think DJs are always deep in. Nah, bro, stuff we like every... get super tired from. No, but you guys get you guys get pussy offers quite a lot. It's it's nah. easier for a DJ to get a girl because yeah, not as much as a comedian though. A DJ, I don't know. There's just something about DJing that you know girls find fascinating and attracted to to to, to the guys. Kalinga, you wanna explain that? Uh, Before you were married, <laughs> in your previous life, obviously. Let's, let's put a disclaimer. <laughs> but Cheers to, to the freaking weekend. Yeah. Did you, so, did you ever? Did you ever face those? Um, um, I think it comes with the job. Yeah. You, I, like, like VGZ is saying, it, it's hard to figure out why. I think it's. Oh crap! Jimmy K explained this properly. Mm. When he said women will like a man in a position of power. And as a DJ, you sort of are in a position of power because you're controlling a whole club. So now, if you're in front of 300 people in a club and everybody's doing what you say, you're in a position of power. So there's a girl now staring at you the whole night like, okay, this guy's controlling the place. This guy can can control me. (laughs) <laughs> you see what I mean? I like this guy. He can control me. Mm. So I think it's from that perspective, like Jimmy K put it. Yeah, women like that, a yeah. man in a position of power. So maybe, especially in that drunken state, they look at you like, hmm. So what's the craziest thing that's, that's ever happened to you? So VGZ, Talk welcome to, to that Z podcast. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> now, this is guy trying to put me on the spot. Okay, let me I, ask I you I ain't, I ain't taking the bait. What's, what's the yeah. craziest thing that you've ever faced like um, while you were DJing? Yo, man, crazy things, bro. Like, and this is why I feel like women shouldn't drink <laughs> because a lot of these girls be embarrassing themselves in the club. What happened? Night, you know, like, bro, I've seen it all. Let's just put it there. Let's just put it like that. 
And then the next day, this person is calling, apologizing, like, yo, I know that was inappropriate. I'm like, it's cool. Like, it's cool. Bro, I don't even want to say it, but I've seen a whole lot of bad stuff. I've seen a whole lot of bad stuff, bro. Yeah. For real? Yeah. I remember a time, I used to be resident DJ at, uh, you know Cindy's in Keto. Yeah. Cinderella yeah. Nightclub. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, I was resident there. Cindy, for, my why, why are you laughing, Gob? It, it brings back memories, didn't it? That place had a demon in it, man. I remember, because the DJ's booth was big. So, you know, after like, when I just started out, 2006, six seven, I was still like one of the opener DJs at the nightclub. So, the DJ's booth was so big. And let's imagine this whole place where we seated. And then there's like a little crate here that you stand on when you start DJing. So under the table there, we put like a little mattress. You could actually sleep there while the DJ is oh, doing his thing. Oh, no. I think I see what this is going. No, it's not going where you're thinking. No, nothing ever happened in there <laughs> that you're thinking. But I'm sleeping in there after my set because I would do like maybe 21 to 23, the mm -hmm. open, opening set. Mm -hmm. DJ Patrick comes on the deck. Mm -hmm. He starts DJing. So I lie down in there resting, waiting for my next set Wait, at 1 a.m. come did he do? He steps onto the deck. He right. starts mixing. So I lie down in there wait, resting, waiting for my 1 a.m. set. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a bit dim in there. You know how so that was dim. Remember in how there. how how it's, your boots used to be they were always with the dim in there. And, and there was a glass. It was super dark in it's there. It's super dark in there. Well, the little bulb maybe at the back. Mm. So he's DJing there. I'm under, you know, under the deck. The door opens. This chick in a pink dress. I remember exactly what she was wearing. So she comes in. She makes a request. I remember the song exactly. Sweetest girl, White Cliff mm. Jean. Mm -hmm. Can you please play me this song? Blah, 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 blah. Ah, okay, okay, no problem. She walks out, goes to the dance floor. Two, three songs later, he plays a song. So she does dances. does know that you're you under there? Yeah, he knows. He knows I'm there. Right. Yes, the girl doesn't know, though. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So she dances to the song. She comes back to the booth now to thank him with four bottles of Mossy. She puts them on the, on the DJ's table. Yeah. And she says, I am so chuffed that you played my song. I didn't expect that you'd play it. You know what? And she goes, puts her hand back, unzips, and Yo. says, you know what? Just do whatever you want with me. And I'm, I'm looking at her like... What, like, like boobs are out? This is what Dude, I'm telling you. Dude, everything. Everything, I kid you not. This is what I'm telling you. The stuff I've seen. Do anything to what me. She, she just went back, unzipped, and the dress fell. And she says, do whatever you want to me. Yo. But that's a demon. That, that right there, <laughs> that's a demon. That's a demon. <laughs> No, but it's just a club, bro. So many things happen in there. DJ's so booth. Was she, was she hot, though? It was dark in there. I think she was. Yeah, she was quite. Because from did the... You, did, you, did you get a hard on? Like under that From thing? the body language I saw from Patrick, yeah, she was Did hard. you get a hard on? Did you get turned uh, on? No. No? No, I was, I was a bit disgusted. So do you though. think Patrick smashed? He, did, he should have afterwards. Because his set ended earlier than mine. <laughs> You know where that man went. You know where that man nah, went. Nah, I'm just, just joking. <laughs> Yo, Patrick, if you're watching. But I'm, but I'm sure he did. He died, this man. Guy he rest, rest his soul. Oh, God rest oh. his soul. Yeah. But I don't know. More to be you'll, Jesus' point. You'll see, you'll see everything. Dude, huh? You have seen the bro, most. It's crazy in there. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> I was happy I, I quit club DJing early in life, man. Because I, I don't know where my life would have ended up, to be honest. And this is this I started is me. doing weddings. This and, is me right now. I've completely plugged out of the club scene, the mm -hmm. mainstream. Mm -hmm. I'm just doing weddings and just. I like weddings. Yama, I became I became like Kitway's wedding sports, DJ you know I at mean? some mm -hmm. point. Yeah, because the club gets a little crazy, man. I'm getting yeah. old. I want to live longer. Now that you get me, club is a crazy. No, no, you're so good. Nah, but I'm getting old, bro. I want to see fifty. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so what? What? What next for VGZ, man? You've you've sort of done it all when it comes to DJing. You've traveled the world, man. You've done Qatar, Dubai, Australia. What I want to do yeah. now is inspire my young ones. You know, uh, you you see that like it's 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 only correct to say that when we stepped in, you know, it was a team of us. There was about five of us, mm. hungry young lads. We revolutionized the game. Me, Hussein, Blocks, uh, Zane, Hugh from Kitri as well. Mm. After Gesh Groove and them, you know, we took it to the next big, level. Big shout out to Gesh Groove. Yeah. yeah. Tivo, you know, they, they handed it to us. Mm. And we decided to run with it to, to, to an even higher level. Right. So the, the thing now is we've worked so hard for DJs to be here. Like, I don't have any other job. Like... 
my DJing is my professional job. It's a mm. career. You know, I make all my money from DJing. It will, it will hurt me to see the next guy, the next guys in line drop the ball. Right. So we want to inspire them to keep running and grow it into a bigger industry like South Africa has done. Did you know that in South Africa, DJs are bigger than artists? Oh, yeah, mm. absolutely. Yeah. We need to I get mean, to that level. Black coffee. Yeah, so we need to keep inspiring these guys. Bro, we should open a DJ school, bro. We should. Let's open a DJ academy. DJs are so much bigger than you artists. Don't mention him and school in the same sentence. <laughs> Let's call it an academy <laughs> for his comfort. <laughs> Dude, I've lost my point now. Um, oh, saying DJs in South Africa are so much bigger than artists. Yeah, which is what's forcing a lot of artists now to become DJs. Exactly. Zakes Bantwini. Yeah. And congratulations to him on that Grammy, by the way. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So we just need to inspire our young brothers and our younger sisters <laughs> to keep running. Yeah. Bro, I feel so pleased when some folks call me, hi, VGZ, could you please teach our daughter how to DJ? What? Previously, I'm telling you the truth. Previously, DJs were looked down on like, oh, he's a failure. When I started out, yeah. it was so crazy. People said, oh, no, VGZ, I see Lamanja, he's a DJ. You know what I mean? But here I am, I'm doing a lot better than... Than you were in accounts. Our corporate guys. And this is just by God's grace, you know? Did I see right that you've got like three of the same kinds of cars? Oh, yeah. Like but... uh, three types of C classes? Yeah, I did, but I, I sold them off. He's now got a BMW in America. Oh, you sold them off? Yeah, 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 I did. Like, like a so boss. So basically, this is like a growth process, bro. Yeah. One is a 2004. You make some money, you buy a 2007. Mm. You make some money, you buy a 2010. It's no big deal. I remember we were admiring that nice black C200 on Saturday. Exactly. That was on Sunday, yeah. 2016, we yeah. need to get there, bro. So, you know, you just got to keep growing. Speaking of growth. You can't just land yourself a 2020 car without going From through nowhere, the process. Yeah. This, this is how people lose it because you landed Crack. yourself something that you didn't... You know who has a G-Wagon now mm. and owned a Corolla just a few years ago? That's not right. No, it is right. No, that's not the, right. the trajectory. When you listen, when, when you hear what name I'm about to mention, you understand mm. the trajectory, and you've seen him grow as well. Oskido himself, Oscar. When Oscar went to uh, Lumwana Mines to get his first deal, that guy was driving a Corolla whose door he could hardly close. You mm -hmm. know that? Yeah, you told me about it. Yeah, <coughs> and look at him what in his G wagon, wagon today. Sorry, what G wagon does Oscar have? He has a black G wagon. Oscar? Yes. Isn't that a Maybach, bro? Dude, He's got a Maybach. Dude, I'm telling you what cars he has. I've He's been got to his a 2021, 2022 I'm Maybach. I'm, I'm telling you what cars he Yeah, he has that. In Ketway. I've been to his house. Yeah. You didn't see it? Um, actually, I don't want to put his men... <laughs> <laughs> his his That's what I'm saying. Let's not talk more about whatever he does. Dude, speaking of growth... You're not rubbing shoulders with someone. But some man, he's one of the most humble people I've ever seen. That, that dude is extra Oskido. humble, man. Yeah. yeah. Oskido is super kind to everyone. Like, you look at his money and think, would I act the same if I had this kind of money? Bro. Imagine Elson. Elson would slap people if he had that Let kind of money. Let me tell you something. Yeah. You wouldn't shake my hand. I'll, I'll walk around <laughs> with a stick. No, that guy is super humble, You, you, you shake the other end of the stick. <laughs> yes, me. When I've got my... Okay, wait. Dude, I was talking about your growth. <sighs> You're now rubbing shoulders with some of the biggest names on the continent, bruh. Pat Rankin. Even though you 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 tag him, Gob says you're obsessed with Pat Rankin. Yeah, Gob's he's that guy. Him. That guy's Gob. Who? Him. Gob. He, he says, says you're obsessed. You're, obsessed. With, uh, you're always tagging Pat him Rankin. in posts, and he never responds to you. And... Mm -hmm. Bro, I was on tour with Pat Rankin in six countries. What are you chatting about? Six countries. Six Gob. countries, bro. Can you count to six? What six. are you chatting about? Do you, should I bring him here? You want to slap him? Maybe? Nah, nah, nah. Is, nah, he just had that Congratulations question. to God. He's getting married. He's getting married. Can, can we put that on? You're getting married. Congratulations. On this purpose. This Saturday. On purpose. This Saturday. Too. Yeah. Yeah. It's not too late. I keep telling you, it's not too late to back up, bro. <laughs> you see, my, my, my Dude, friendship how, how, with... How did you even get to hook up with Better Ranking, man? So this guy was just a guy who had a dream and... Mm. You know, at the time, I was into uh, a lot of dancer, and he was a dancer artist then. Right. So this guy was putting out some really nice dancer, and I used to get hold of it. So I started playing a lot of that dancer, and most of his songs started getting traction. But that's why I have a lot of love and respect for him, because the moment he blew up, yeah, that guy never forgot who played his music first, and he reached out to me. No He's way. Like, oh, bro, thank you so much. 
you know, God has blessed me now. Things have turned around. The first time he came to Zambia was like 2015. Mm. He was hired by Jean Temba. He called me. We had like fallen off. He had a new phone. He actually didn't call me. He inboxed me on Twitter. He's like, yo, bro, I'll be in Zambia at whatever time. I'm staying at Radisson. Come check me out. So that's how I went to to, to link him up with Tivo. Mm. He was a complete big star now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not some guy's music I used to play was a lot of Nah, he was a global star. Deep, man. And, you know, this was before he even had his biggest song. This was before My Woman, My Everything. <coughs> and when he made that record, at that point, I was convinced I'll never see this guy again. He's gone. Yeah. Bro, that guy kept the kept the communication. Right. And he was coming to perform at in Livingstone for a concert. That was the first time I DJed for him. I remember that one. Yeah, yeah, that was the first time I DJed for him. And I guess he liked what I did there. And then we started traveling. Wow. Bro, <laughs> I was staying in some <laughs> proper hotels. Mm. Making proper that's money. That's a good life, man. Even now, like he dropped his, his his new record three weeks ago. Right. With uh, Popcorn. I can mm. show you messages, man. So I don't know what this guy is chatting about. God, do you have your answer now? <laughs> can you apologize to the man? He was saying you're the one also hooked up uh, Slap D with Spider Rankin. I wouldn't really say that. Yeah. It's just I had a friendship with him. Yeah. And the two guys are like some talent. So mm. I guess he recognized my brother's talent. And, you know, they decided to work on a record together. But I just introduced them. <coughs> have, do, you, do, you have, do you have a song with him on an album, though? No, no I don't have a song with him. Why? Uh, I don't think we've had a vibe yet, yeah? Mm. We haven't had a vibe yet. And this time, I was really trying to get him, but he's also working on his album. Mm. And usually when an artist is working on their project, they don't want to mix the sound. So this time, I really want... I, had, I, I, I thought like I had a vibe for him. There's a record mm. called No Man Bigger Than God on my album. It's more of a dancer record. Right. There's a station on it, and I really wanted him on that record. But he's working on his album, so we we didn't hit it off. Um, every major DJ in the world now, and and I think you're on that path as well when it comes to making, you know, DJs and music now. It's like inseparable. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm looking forward to you having that one banger that just Yo. puts you up on the world map. Like, Bro, really. I think we spoke about this the yeah. other day. I'm praying on that too because all it takes is just one record. That's it. Like Uncle Waffles. Mm. <coughs> like Are you okay, what's bro? his name? No, I'm not. Did you take um, did you take care of you today? No. Bro. No. Okay. What's his name? Tyler I see you, that Monique yeah, song. Yeah. That song has taken him places. So it just takes one record and you've gone. Mm. I'm re- I'm looking forward to that day, man. Like you have that banger song that takes you all over the world. Yeah, the That'll way nice we though. see. Uh, we'll keep praying on it. One but, day, hopefully, it'll happen. I mean, but then again, do with you God, feel nothing is impossible? Considering the musical landscape globally, you're more into dancehall, and everybody I see blowing up is doing house. Talk yeah. about the Zex Bantwinis, <coughs> Black it's Coffee. Like what, um, my brother said here, mm. you don't have to dilute your sound just to fit in, right? The best you could do is just keep pushing your sound. Who knows? It One might day. just work out for you. I feel like the moment you choose your sound, just to move with Stick the wave, you lose your identity. Yeah. Mm. So I'm happy with what I do, even if it doesn't right. get as big as, sorry about that, as I'm a <coughs> piano or whatever, but I'm, I'm not that artist. Uh, speaking of which, I, I think it was actually Black Coffee who said the same. It was like, you know what, no matter what kind of a wave comes through, I'm going to sit to my house music. Simple. And I'm a piano came. I remember Mac, 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 Mac G was actually asking him about it, saying, there's all this whole new wave of my piano. Are you jumping? And he says, dude, I'll stick to what I do. And a few weeks after that, he wins a Grammy. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Actually, he actually won the Grammy. No, it was actually Stephen Bartlett on uh, the Diary of a CEO podcast where they asked him if he's going to change uh, genres to fit into what's happening currently in Africa or have more like an Afro- Afrobeat uh, tune. And he said, I'll stick to what I do. And I encourage every DJ to stick to what they love and stick to that. You never know what comes out of it. I also feel like there's a lot of fulfillment if you do what you're really good at and something that you like. True. Yeah. It's not just about jumping on a wave, doing something your heart is not even in there. I don't think you can win like that. See, we've You come win full with circle. what you know, yeah. right? Yeah, we've come full circle yeah. because that's exactly what yeah. we said yeah. in the beginning of the show. Yeah. 100. So you're never doing on a piano? 
nah, nah, I don't see myself in that space. I'll play about <coughs> piano, yeah. but I don't think I want to get in like, I mean, the masters are there. My Parisa is there. You, yeah. you can't be You don't want to jump into that space, yeah. Nah, that's for them. Let's just do what we do. Simple. Not but don't forget, bro. You know yeah. the thing with these these waves, they come and go. Look at Gom. Do you remember Gom? Dude, that lasted like a, two and a half something. years. <laughs> no, maybe two and a half years, bro. Yeah. Gom sound. You don't mm-hmm. remember that? Yeah, I know it. I know it. Gone. From South Africa, right? Yeah, gone. But house music is still there. Yeah. The original house music is still there. There's also house in the UK. Yeah. <coughs> but it's an African house. I mean, Zex Bantwin released one of his biggest songs ever, Osama, in a period where everyone else was just we'll producing on piano. piano. At the, all the clubs were just playing on piano. A, who won a Grammy for, for their music? Zex Bantwin. Yeah. Just stay true to what the fuck you're doing, Simple. Man. Stay true. Yeah. Simple. Anything else you want to talk about as our nah, source I'm boss good. here? I'm dying here now. Dude, is there any question that, you know, you thought we we're going to ask you, but we haven't and you wanted us to ask you? I don't think so because, you know, judging by his his way of doing things, is always like going looking for some controversy in your life and then he brings <laughs> that to light. I've been fortunate enough. My life is clear. Yeah. It's I'm, not. I told you. I'm I told dramatic. you before the cameras came on. <laughs> <laughs> I told Forget you before the cameras came on. <laughs> so if I was about controversy, I'd have brought it I up. I get so you. No. I get you. Yeah. I get you. Nah, you're my boy. I, I don't know why a lot of people feel that that podcast is just about controversy. I, no, I, no, I, no, I, no, call no. Up, I call up some people sometimes. They're like, no, but I don't have anything controversial about me. I'm like, oh, but for real? We like just want to... I just want you to share your story. That's it. I get that. Yeah. But it's also, you know, like the controversy kind of like spices up the, the session. Well, so. If it does, it does. Yeah. Exactly. But that's not the point of that, that podcast. See, the mind, people just like drama. So the moment you give them a pinch of drama, they're super excited. Yeah. yeah. I saw in the other podcast, uh, Elson mm-hmm. was trying to spark up something. He asked Elm Hooker a question like, does VGZ give you any... <laughs> <laughs> you understand? Anyone? <coughs> Does VGC give you any <coughs> any crap in the industry? But me and El go way back. That's my brother, man. You're the, you're the biggest fucking DJ, bro. We've, we've done some work together. By the grace of God, I would say I'm in that space, but I try not to think about it. You know, and I'm not rec- I'm not on record uh, saying that I'm the biggest or I'm the best, whatever. I'm still I working. Am. Okay, so if you are not on that list, give me your top five DJs. In top five right DJs. Now. Yeah. Uh, I would say number one for me, my number one. Mm. Yo, my number one would be Gesh Groove. Gesh Groove, okay. Shout out to him. Two? Gesh yeah. Groove, Impact, bro. Two? So many yeah. years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's lost it, man. Yeah, number two. Our mothers used to dance to Gesh Groove music and it's still there, yeah. making us kids dance. So number two. Mm-hmm. I would say DJ was saying straight up. Right. Yeah, I was saying it's very technical. He's going. He's still got the same energy as 20 years ago or 15 years ago whenever I started DJ. Mm. Number three would be Zayn Best Flex. You know, that's one guy I've never heard DJ. He doesn't DJ much, but when he DJs, he's amazing. Mm. Number four would be Club. I've, I've never heard Club DJ as well. He's, he's dope. Number five would be me. You'd put yourself at number five yeah. on that list. Yeah. Switcher. Switcher will be number six. Switcher is one of my favorite DJs. Yeah, he's my one of mine too. Switcher is one of my favorite DJs. For me... DJs. So if I wasn't on the list, I'd probably put Switcher. But serious, I just eh? needed to put myself on. <clears throat> now, now, how I'm, does I'm, that I'm, feel that you didn't make the list? You I'm, 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 I'm not DJing anymore, bro. So. Yeah, exactly. Well, I really, I really exactly. DJ. Yeah, Do you know but what I can it tell takes for me DJ. to convince Skeplers to come to a gig with me? <laughs> I have to start campaigning three months before that. <laughs> it's not in that space anymore. There's something there's yeah. some that I've seen. Switcher um, uh, and a couple of other DJs, it must take a lot in you because I've seen DJs damn near catch a stroke jumping up and down, showing how they are enjoying what they're playing. I love that energy. Switcher got that. Right? Switcher, another boy is hungry. There's a point yeah. that I'm trying to make. Yeah. You have to pull that motivation out of some way. If you are the only one in the club dancing, in the club <laughs> dancing and jumping up, and people are just <laughs> chilling, looking at you like that, and you're like just jumping up and down the whole forty-five minutes, 
You have to pull that energy and motivation. Like, um, I don't need you people to be enjoying this. I'm enjoying this shit myself. Bro, you know, you know what happens when you when you put up that type of energy. Eventually, they start moving. Happiness is contagious. Exactly, because I hate going to a place and the DJ is playing and he's not acting like he's rocking it. If he's not rocking it, if he's not feeling like he's rocking it, how is how then is he gonna rock me? So mm. I'm actually for the I'm I'm actually for the I support the DJs that jump at, up and about mm-hmm. because eventually that energy switcher switches. will be at granddaddy's at 15 hours jumping with the handkerchief in it's hand contagious. the crowd is seated not moving at all but 10 minutes later, later because of his some, energy start moving. one girl will stand up one guy will start hey an- an- another question you know what i mean because, <coughs> yeah <coughs> excuse me there's a new wave or trend where djs have got like a whole posse or entourage behind them where they sort of become like hype men. Hype men. Yeah. That's, like, that's for, for the gram. It, it looks good. I found that in Lusaka. It's, you, it's, you, don't, you, don't, you don't do that? No, I don't do that. I'm, yo, bro. Me, I'm a ghost. I rock up, do my set, I disappear. I come alone, I leave I'm, alone. I'm, I'm sort of the same, yeah. I'm a ghost. Yeah. If I do a set at your club or at your spot, when I'm done with my set, I'll just say, how's it, how's it to a few people? And you have a that. shot. 10 minutes later, gone. I'm the same. Yeah. And I don't like those dramatic... Uh, you've seen me arrive at a gig before when I came yeah, to food, yeah, I have. food market. Yeah. I don't like those dramatic entrances. Mm. Six girls, seven guys. <laughs> I, I don't need that type I, of... I found light. that in the South. I, I remember the first time I DJ at Granddaddy's. I do my set, I'm done. And this DJ walks in with a passe. No, actually, we didn't even see him walk in with them. He starts DJing all of a sudden, like five tables in front of him stand up and they start dancing. I'm like, nah, that, that, so, that, now, that, that song is that not that big. I know, I know what you mean. So, so now it's it's switch, yeah, to stage. So it's which I opened my mind exactly. up. So, no, DJs come with their own people going here, yeah. on now. So basically, because it's become very competitive. Yeah. And if my spot is going to hire you to DJ, you need to prove that you're worth. So you hiring. have to impress the club owner exactly. by saying, so I got 20 people. Ombres, ombres, yeah. I've got a set at Ochanyama. I need you to rock up and I need you to groove. So there's a lot of staging going on now. I'll, I'll buy a bottle. Exactly. No. Yeah. What's that? No, we're good. Okay. <coughs> anyway, before we wrap this up, I just wanted to big you guys up for this podcast. You guys have done amazingly well. I'm proud. I've been watching. I've been following from the get go and I'm still here. So keep it up. No, thanks a lot. Bro. PGZ. Yeah. We appreciate The source this. boss, Zambia's number five DJ. The flesh. <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot for coming through, bro. It's, no, it's been for real. Me. I mean, I've actually had more fun than I thought I was going to have with you, bro. I was actually a bit worried because yeah. I was shifty, if I may say. Because, you know, Elsa just comes up from nowhere. You're scared and of what Elsa one of those uppercuts. <laughs> and you're like, where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> you, you were scared of what information Elson could have had on, on you. Not on me. No, 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 bro. He actually had something it, on you. He did I, say something before we started. But it's be, he's being nice today. He's not feeling too well. Mm, okay. Yeah. I, I, I damn near died, bro. Yeah. Ish, I damn near died. So the yeah, the past man. couple of days have been rough, but I'm good now. I, 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 I. And I've always felt like, you know, it's doesn't matter what country that you're in. It, 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 the difference between you when you're sick, that is, the difference between you making it and you dying is literally money. What do you mean? Health, healthcare, healthcare. Healthcare won't save you, bro. It will. I don't think so, man. When it's I, your time, it's your time. No. Regardless of things, how much healthcare you have. My guy, there are things... When there God are people decides who have died, to dim off the lights, you're bro, gone. There are people who have died of diseases or of things that could have been avoided if they had money. Facts. That's Facts. basically what I'm saying. Okay. But there are people don't, who could have avoided prison, but they didn't have money. It's the same thing. You think so? Uh, yeah. You've just taken this a totally different direction. No, I'm just saying money, money risk. Ecclesiastes chapter nine, verse what? Five? Money answereth all things. There are a lot of people in prison right now Wait. because they couldn't afford a lawyer. They're big, they're locked up. Yeah. There's money in the Bible. Ecclesiastes chapter there was nine. No money lo- then, bro. There was pl- there was oh money my word. Then. Should I got come there on? There was money then. Yeah. In the Bible. Yeah. Jesus was sold for silver, wasn't that money? No. That was silver. Isn't money a medium of exchange? 
So the silver was the money then. And remember, there was Caesar's face on that money. Like we have KK and Mandela on money. Yeah, fucks, fucks, fucks. Yeah. End of debate? Thank End you. of debate. You won. VGZ, it's been real, man. Thank you for having me. To the me. next episode. Remember to click on subscribe. Uh, like our Facebook page as well. That's that podcast. Instagram, Join that's that podcast. Join our amazing then. fucking Patreon. Pe- dude, I'm seeing so many people in the WhatsApp group. Have, have they all paid up? <coughs> <coughs> Where's the money? Um, I need to check. You guys have a WhatsApp group? Yeah, yeah I've got a WhatsApp group. A WhatsApp do you, do you group mind of... adding me to that group? Yeah, so yeah, no ha- how how this uh, Patreon's WhatsApp group works is... Look, we've got stuff like Gob, Anthony there that need to be paid. And uh, there's just two of us here. And there's so much going on in the background that we need help with from okay. the fans of That Z Podcast. I'll be happy to be a part of that so group. The, the Patreon's group, we, we're <laughs> only putting it at a 200 kwacha. You join the group and you get to have some level of power. Autonomy on, on uh, picking who the next guest is. You can decide who comes on the next podcast. And you can prepare things. questions. What we'll ask things, them, yeah. the direction the podcast takes. Yeah. So you mean when you put me up in the WhatsApp group, these people didn't have questions for me? No, you no. came. You, so you came in as um. You wanna explain? No, yes. <laughs> Don't okay, break go, my go, heart. listen. No, 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 no. I was, somebody, no, no, we we planned this on Sunday when I'm doing the throwback Don't gig. break my heart. No, I'm not breaking your heart. Listen to how this happened. On Sunday, you and I discussed that we're going to do an episode this week. We're going to do it later in the it week. It doesn't seem to be in no, agreement. No, listen. You and I discussed this on Sunday. We're but together. We did. I'm yeah. just and I said, we'll do it later this week. Then Gob calls us and says, guys, we have to do an episode today or we won't have an episode next week because I'm leaving town for my wedding. Oh, okay. Which is why I pressured you to come today. Ah, okay. I thought there Either was somebody way, we're still gonna... make it. And then now you had to so we didn't have your... enough time to Ombre VGZ, are you free? You know, there's no one things. coming. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> VGZ to the next episode, man. Have a lovely day. May the good Lord richly bless you. Tan 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 Tan-tan-tan-tan 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 Tan-tan-tan-tan